Balance Podcast, Kyle here with... That's me. Pierre's with me, as you could probably have assumed from the random noises and the delayed response. Kabow! That's right, Pierre's here. All right, we're going to talk about She-Hulk, episode one, and then Pierre's we will here. distinctively switch Pierre over. Made and a podcast episode. Okay, Pierre made a good point that we kind of just mush things together when we talk about multiple episodes. So let's specifically talk about episode one. Spoilers ahead, and when I say spoilers ahead, I mean spoilers, let's talk about Captain America losing his virginity. Potentially Peter Quill's grandma. So. <laughs> it was debunked. Yes. It's not real. It's But fun. it would be hilarious. It's a fun theory. It is 100% false, but the actress has portrayed two different characters in the MCU, side characters of that, and yeah, it definitely could have been, but it's not. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, not really important, but I think it's funny. I think it's also funny that they touch on things like that throughout the episode. Mm-hmm. Another thing being the Smart Hulk. I'm the Smart Hulk. That's what they call me. I think that's funny because I don't know if you're aware of the rights and the issues with Universal, but right. why they can't call him Professor Hulk. Right, right. So I think the fact that they do call him a Smart Hulk, I think that's just been an ongoing small joke. I don't like stupid things. She's a lawyer, you know, that's wild. Who would have seen She-Hulk being a lawyer, you know? Just the comics from yeah. issue one or anything. Yeah. Let's just start there. Where do you rank this? Just off of episode one, where do you rank this amongst Disney Plus? TV shows, right? I put this up there with WandaVision. Now, I only have one episode to really judge it on, but when I say I'm putting it up there with WandaVision, I think on the creativity side of it. I think it's a very creative show. I like the idea of it over Captain America and the Winter Soldier. Mm -hmm. I think I like the premise of this better, but that's not to say that that show wasn't good. I think it's not a different audience, so to speak, but it's a different like For entertainment and, factor. Yeah. Because we're getting the best of both worlds where we're getting witty comedy in an elevated sitcom style and in the same thing, still getting action with Hulks. Like Hawkeye was kind of its own little thing. Like its own vibe in a sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think this and WandaVision, they were like, we're going to be creative as fuck with these shows. Yeah. And that's what we are getting so far. Yeah, and I agree 100%. And I think that potentially could possibly beat WandaVision at some point. Not yet, but at some point. And part of it is because of the actress, and I'll go on a little tangent with that, but Tatiana, she is from Orphan Black, which was a BBC sci-fi show. I believe it went on for like five seasons, maybe four. I watched it with my wife as it was coming out back in the day. The actress is phenomenal. Like, this does not do her justice. And I say that because... Obviously, she's doing a fantastic job already just from episode one, but the premise of Orphan Black was clones. She played multiple versions of herself, and although it's the same actress and they're using split green screens to put the actress in the same room with herself, it's clearly the same actress, but just from a style change, a hair change. I mean, she's that good that she played multiple versions of the same person, and it felt like completely different people. Like, you honestly felt scene to scene different actress. Like, it felt that way. Side note with that, Jessica Jones actress, Kristen Ritter, is actually going to be in a sequel series of Orphan Black on AMC, which is a kind of ironic little flip there, although she may reprise her role, rumors. But yeah, so I love the actress. My wife was obsessed with Orphan Black. If you haven't seen it, go and watch that. I think it honestly makes you appreciate She-Hulk so much more. Yeah, Jenny actually watched that show too. Oh, okay. Uh, Cool. So... She actually described it exactly the way you did, the actress, and how it's so awesome to see her in She-Hulk because of what she was as an actress in Orphan Black. I think the episode's awesome so far. I think they did a good job even at the beginning where it was just like, it went right into her going into some case and, you Mm -hmm. know, they're all in an office talking and then she turns to the camera and is like, let me speed you guys up on kind of what's going on. I think that was like, just clean, well done. I'm excited to see other characters too. I know Titana Mm -hmm. obviously happened. It was quick, but I don't think that's just her solo appearance my only complaint just to interrupt you for a second was we didn't need it to end that way i would have rather the episode ended with her breaking through the wall and just Mm -hmm. being like oh shit there's gonna be a fight in the next episode not really starting the fight and starting the shift to she hulk and showing the court she changed i would have held that for the next episode it just seemed like you said quick and a little rushed otherwise i think the episode was perfect and speaking of breaking walls how do you feel about the fourth wall breaking because as you've probably seen on hundreds of tiktoks deadpool talking to the camera was not first i think it was done perfectly 
any more would have been too much. Any less would have not done it justice. But I mean, this really felt like a comic book. I was very happy with it. To your point about the fight being quick, yes, I felt mm -hmm. like it was quick, but it's giving us an idea of how this show is going to go. Certain things, certain elements, like people are aware that she is She-Hulk. Yeah, she's a lawyer, she mm -hmm. does her thing, and she's also She-Hulk. So when she busted out of the suit, fought the person, it was quick, but I think it was meant to be. Like, it was supposed to just show, like, yeah, I just kicked someone's ass. All right, let's get back to this case now. And again, to your point of the whole fourth wall breaking, I think it's very fluid, and I feel like it's the perfect amount. They're just doing a good job with making me intrigued with She-Hulk, because I really was going into this, although the actress, I was kind of excited based off of, you know, hearing about it, Orphan Black mm -hmm. and whatnot, but I was still going in with it, like, I don't know how I'm going to feel about this show, but I think it's doing well. How do you feel about how they're developing Hulk and what we have storyline-wise there? Because I think we're, we're moving our way back to Sakaar. I agree with that. I think a lot of people agree. First appearance of Scar, that is starting to rise in price, so we're not the only ones thinking this. But yeah, showing him, not necessarily having his shit together, but having his shit together in regards to being the Hulk, that is obviously foreshadowing that is not going to last, and we're going to possibly get an Immortal Hulk or a World War Hulk or he's going to die. Those are my theories. But yeah, they're setting something up. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see him in a few episodes and then he comes back at some point or he's just kind of a video chat here and there. But it was a lot of Mark Ruffalo for episode one. And I don't think we're going to get all of that again. I think you're right. I think they're just giving us an idea of where he is right now. Like you're saying, video chat, maybe some sort of role there. I think Thing was rumored to make an appearance in this show. Okay. You're going to have multiple characters be mentors to her, you know, as she decides whether she wants to be a superhero or not. Right. You know, because it seems like she's still like, I'm a lawyer. Like, I want to be a lawyer. Yes, I'll fight this person. Get him the fuck out of my courtroom. I'm trying to win this case right now. Right. You know, but it seems like that's more of her side job. And that's why, again, that quickness, like, boom. Like, I'm back wearing my suit again. But yeah, going back to Sakaar, I don't know so much about the dying part. And I don't know about him having a son or not. Because my only thing with that is, in the comic books, the way she Hulk gets her powers is because she needs a blood transfusion. And Hulk happens to be, like, the family member with the right blood. The director changed that because mm -hmm. she felt that Hulk the way he's been, his moments, everything that's happened in his life, the MCU Hulk, it wouldn't make sense for him because he's been so careful with getting people infected. He was so careful and wanted to isolate himself and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. It didn't make sense to her that he would willingly give his blood. So why would he have a kid? The only argument I would have is he was stuck as Hulk while he was away being a gladiator. So stuck as Hulk, Hulk is not going to make the same decisions, and maybe he was under the impression that he couldn't reproduce as Hulk, or generally speaking. And I think that's the way you go with it. He needs to go up there, he doesn't realize that he has a kid, mm -hmm. or he does realize it, and that's why he's like, yeah, I got things I gotta figure out. That could even be the thing that pushes him over the edge to revert back into those two personalities rather than a combined version of them. And like you said, there is legal rights that we don't don't quite understand who knows if that's a possibility they will have the rights for 2023 okay okay so he can have a solo movie now yeah that opens up the door for a lot yeah. of possibilities here. definitely definitely does i still would really like to see and i think you know where i'm gonna say donny cates giant whatever no i would want to see that don't get me wrong that actually would be a crazy adaptation before that maestro maestro yeah okay I would like to see Maestro, actually. I see that happening in the sense of maybe it's kind of like an immortal Hulk and he gets sent away again and comes back as a villain. And that's it right there. I can see that definitely happening. They have the means for time travel and all these things. Mm -hmm. So I think they do have the groundwork to make that happen later on, especially seeing how well a solo Hulk movie will do. And I think it'll do great. Kind of like Thor. We're on like the fifth Thor at this point. Right. Why wouldn't they do five Hulks, you know? Yeah. No, that's a good one. I think it's going to happen in some fashion. Worst case scenario, I think a what if, at least an That'd episode, cool, yeah. or the villain of the overall season, possibly. Now, the Donny Cates one, now that you bring it up, I don't mm -hmm. know how you translate that into like the movies, honestly. I think it's too out there. Yeah, that's too much. I just know you love that man. 
I do. That would actually be a great what if episode. At least with Maestro, it's the future. So it's something that you can like correct with the current Hulk and you can just right. send him off on a solo movie. He goes out into the future because that's what the book was. He goes out into the future and he fights himself. Right. So if they did something like that, you can easily correct it. And even if it does bad, you move on. Right. But Donna Kate's story is like, I feel like that's a what if. <laughs> How do you make Bruce Banner that crazy from where he is right now? Hey, and Chris Hemsworth said that he is willing to do as many as they give him. So a little banner of war. Look, I'm all for it. And I would love to see more than Hulk Banner attached to him in a robot suit. I would love to see Thor with two crows. Thor with two crows. So go back to She-Hulk, some Easter eggs. Did you notice the Ultron Iron Man-esque helmet as well as the Gladiator helmet? Yeah. I think are definitely more than Easter eggs and hints. The helmet being that he's going to revert back to the vicious stage. And the Ultron helmet hinting that Ultron is definitely not gone forever. And possibly one day could get something once again. Yeah, I don't think that book's closed at all. Overall, I really thought episode one was pretty much like a 9 out of 10. I didn't like Hulk saying bruh. I didn't appreciate the bruh. Hulk getting run over by a jeep and not quite being able to stop it is questionable being we've seen him stop much larger things which just kind of proves he did lose strength in the combination into Smart Hulk. First time using a thunderclap in a while. The thunderclap scene was fantastic that she instantly learned how to do it better than him. Just the progress in the origin of her. And like you said, the pacing pretty much made it great where she's like okay like i figured it out can i go back to my job i worked hard for this it's needed i feel like amongst the mcu this was a missing piece i didn't give a shit about she hulk and i never did and yes the actress had me more excited for the show but now i'm hooked instantly i'm excited to see what team she ends up on because obviously she's not going to just be solo forever i know they can see her on avengers i know that's a thing obviously <laughs> but is there a team before then maybe defenders redo we are rumored to get some netflix characters back but yeah all right, so I think that's enough for episode one. Are you ready, Pierre, to talk about episode two? Pierre? Pierre, did you watch episode two? Nope. Okay. What's going on, man? Hey, what's up? Did you watch episode two of She-Hulk? I just did. No way. Yeah. Do you want to talk well, about it? Sure, yeah, let's get into it. First of all... How do you compare episode two to episode one? They're both on par. They're on the right track here. I don't think that they're really doing bad as far as the TV shows go. And I'm getting a little bit of office vibes, and I don't just mean that because the fourth wall breaking, but just the humor of it is witty. Like, I get it all, if that makes sense. Not that I don't normally get other shows, but it's like, we're very in it, in the midst of it with her. So what did you think of Abomination and the reference to basically acknowledging the fact that that movie does in fact exist in the MCU? It's so weird that it's a whole new set of people that had nothing to do with that movie. I had a moment where I realized like, this is strange what's happening. Did you catch when Hulk goes, oh, we got over it. You know, he wrote me a haiku. We're all good now. It was a long time ago. I was a completely different person. Literally. I think that was where I was like, yeah, that is weird. Now, if they bring back Liv Tyler and make her red She-Hulk, then we're really think, getting connected. You now. think they'll go that far? I think they're going to skip the reds from the way this is going. I think they're going to skip them. No Thunderbolts red team. No. Thing. abomination probably will fill that role in my opinion but yeah generally the episode just to give like a little synopsis is her getting fired and then finding work at none other than the company that got her fired and specifically being thrown into a shitty situation of having to represent abomination now that was clever i think the episode could have been a little longer i'm hoping it is the shortest of them all because it was just another setup and i'm hoping for a longer one next week but it is a fun episode it's keeping its pace now titania i wish showed up because it was just like the fight scene in the first episode was rushed and then they don't show her at all no besides like in the newscast but something cool i don't know if you've been on twitter or basically any social media today yesterday through today what brilliant advertising so not only is she on social media as if the character was for real on social media not only are all of those going viral She's actually going around the city and vandalizing live She-Hulk posters. It's using your advertisement to make it new advertisements. You're only paying for it once. You're doubling down and it's going viral. There's no way they don't do that going forward. So smart. Just so smart. That alone like makes it possibly the number one show. And it pulls you into it even when it's not happening. 
it's like one of those things where everyone's talking about it. They yeah. basically force that upon the comic book community. I was just about to say, now that you like mentioned it, I hope we don't forget like what they just did. Like the year, honestly, the shows are kind of better than the movies. Yep. Who would have thunk? Streaming makes more money. Think the budgets are probably smaller. Now look, is the CGI perfect in She-Hulk? No, it's way better than that first trailer. It's 100% acceptable and it's the best TV has seen. What other TV shows have that good CGI besides Game of Thrones, which is the biggest budget ever? That mindset of you're doing not a TV budget, but not a movie budget and you're spanning the show over six to eight weeks. Well, now you just got two months of subscription just in time for the next show to come out. What would you think of an Avengers TV show? They do cop shows. It's a team of cops. Same concept. Wow. You're just going to have to do more grounded ones because budget isn't going to allow for this crazy CGI because you're going to be paying too many big names. It would pay to be more creative with how they shoot it. One thing I did notice just like easter egg wise which again makes this show just witty and why i love it so much so when she got fired the title screen popped up and it went from attorney at law to attorney for hire which is obviously is a nod to heroes for hire in the same sentence that was cool and then when she went into the prison they're explaining to her don't go over the line and the way he's explaining it oh sounds of the lambs and then of course she-Hulk makes the joke, like, is he going to serve me up with fava beans, making a Hannibal joke? Even just her walking to the prison, they're doing everything so smart. I enjoyed that. And then Abomination, obviously, you know, he's full of shit, but then showing him in the fight club from Shang-Chi when Wong teleports him in, tying that back now, what do you call it, an Easter egg in Shang-Chi of just showing him, and now it's relevant to the court case in this show. They did a really good job with that because they made a really compelling argument that like, yeah, no, he kind of did what he was supposed to do. The government hired him to go under experimental treatment to fight a major threat, who was actually a threat at that time. But if you remember the movie, he played a dirtbag. <laughs> he was an asshole. Well. But as far as legal goes, you're right, did his orders. And ended yeah, up in jail. And claiming that the serum messed with his brain. Right. Who else can you ask? That goes more with the conflict of interest. Right. Yeah, the conflict of interest thing definitely wasn't as clean cut as that. I'm glad they noted it, but I was thinking to myself, eh, that waiver's not going to cover it for this situation. <laughs> he tried sure. to murder a blood relative. Like, oh, yes. not second, going to work. Second stuff on a uh, TV show. I do have a soft spot for law TV shows. And I think between that and, you know, comics and literally probably one of my favorite actresses, I really think this is going to be one of my favorite MCU anything. Yeah. When I, mean, I didn't give a shit about She-Hulk at all. What do you mean? I don't know if I've ever actually read her in a comic. Maybe she cameoed in something I read. I've never actually read her at all. I want to say she was in Civil War 2, but I don't remember. That's been a long time for that. I don't even know if they've written much for her for a while. Now they have to. They can't deny how good this is. And just to touch on something that my privileged male white ass should not be talking about, they're doing such a good job of just subtly being like, yeah, this name is kind of fucking stupid. I'm the female version, so I have to have she in my name amongst a bunch of other things. But just that alone, that one's not going to go over anyone's head. Do they ever change it? No. I don't think there's a way to. Oh, I know a way to. Just make her Hulk. Yeah, and kill him. Okay, yeah. Obviously, they're setting something up for him. Let's talk about that briefly. He went away in the spaceship, the spaceship that was seen and caused the car accident from episode one. Do we think that's going to set up a World War Hulk movie with his child, Scar, which he didn't know he had, which came sometime before Ragnarok? I was wondering, can they pull that off fully within the show? No, it's definitely got to be its own thing. And I think that would work best as a movie. And Hulk is a big name that it's going to be a blockbuster kind of everyone runs to it. You think so? I think now at this point, yeah. Especially if the smart gets dropped from his name and he's yeah. just a savage Hulk or as Pierre said before I hung up on him, Maestro. I remember now the way he says Maestro. Maestro. I like it. It works. But really think about it. If this spaceship made them crash, maybe that spaceship was there to find him, to bring him to space, to say either A, there's an evil version of you floating around through the multiverse who's yeah. old and angry and trying to destroy everything, or B, you didn't know this, but you have a child and he's an asshole. Does that work in any of the future Avengers movies as a tie-in? It, it could in the sense that it'll make him a villain, okay. or it'll make him lose control, or it'll make him a loose cannon, or it'll give him more supporting cast so they can bring in or i'm wrong and smart hulk stays and it turns into a space adventure like thor yeah 
I don't know if I would like that. With the technology of the CGI now, because the last time we really saw him like vicious, insane vicious, was what, Age of Ultron? Yeah. I'd love to see him vicious and now with today's CGI. Yeah. Was there any other Easter eggs that you caught that I didn't? The Wolverine reference. There was a Wolverine reference? It was on like the web page that they were looking at. Underneath the, the shoe, it says related articles, and uh -huh. then it's like man fights with metal claws and bar fight. Like when she was like job searching? Yes. So does that confirm that he exists? I think it has to. Right? Why else would they make that nod? I mean, it's so low level that they have no clue. I mean, doesn't she have sex with him at some point in the comics? I think we're on to something there. We're on to something. So overall, I give the episode, again, 9 out of 10, the same as episode 1. What would have made it a 10? A little more content and a little titania. I guess that's it. I was going to say a fight scene, but then I would have sounded stupid, so I didn't say it. So yeah, just seven or eight more minutes would have made it a 10, I think. No, you're right. I can agree with that. They'll probably make other episodes longer to compensate for it. Yeah, I think so. You know what I want to do? I want to Google and see if anyone from the office is at all part of the staff. Just one person. Because I'm just getting these slight vibes yeah. of intelligent humor, and it feels like I have something smart again, you know? And yeah, Family's Podcast. Family's Podcast. Did you pick up my books today or no? So I didn't pick up this week's, but your last week's, mm -hmm. I did. Okay. And one of them <laughs> may have had a little issue. What kind of issue? Leia got one of them. Oh, is that why you've given her a bone in the background for her to chew on? To distract yeah. her? What comic did she eat? So you know how you've been like collecting all the poison ivies? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All the different covers? Yeah, she got one of the variants. I think that's just cover price. I don't think that's an expensive one. Not salvageable, I can tell you that. Oh, at all. Not at, not all. at all. No, no. Every corner is destroyed. Corners, not just like, shredded. Like nibbled to bits. But you should be very thankful because she had full access to the whole pile and only went for that one. So maybe you don't want that one. Mm. Maybe she's saying something. That's um, like an $80 pile. It just one ripped it up <laughs> and said, that's it. That's good. So yeah, you're very lucky on how the situation happened because if it wasn't for me forgetting to turn off the coffee machine, I think all of them would have been gone. She only had maybe 30 minutes to an hour of time to okay. destroy. So yeah. The full day would have been the full pull. Might not have been the full pull. It might have just been the one she felt you didn't need. All right. Well, thank you for telling me about this. I yeah. appreciate it because you could have just given me the pile. I'm so absent-minded. I probably wouldn't have noticed. Uh, no, I wouldn't have been able to sleep at night. I'll show you the picture. She really fucked it up. Yep. I'm going to text it to you right now. And guilty in the background.